Welcome to Oak Orchard Dairy. Um, we've been in operation since 1917. Uh, in about 2005-ish, uh, I've seen some robot dairies and labor was starting to get harder and harder to find. So we started to kind of look around at robots. Um, by 2010, we were getting a little more serious about it. So we started looking at, you know, different farms and farm shows and whatnot. Um, and then, it was about 2014, 2013, we went to Europe and uh, seen farms over there. And then we started getting real serious, you know, with design and out west. And we found a bunch of designs, so we started putting it all together on paper. In 2017, we built this barn and added four robots with the idea we were going to come right in behind it with four more right away. It took us three years to realize that dream, but uh, we got the other four going this spring. Now all eight are running, and so here we are milking about uh, 1,050 cows. Half of them in the robot barn, half of them in the parlor. Uh, our intentions are to build uh, some additions on to that barn and put robots in that barn, complete the whole project and have robots everywhere. When that'll happen, it's difficult to find out or know, but uh, in that whole transition, we ended up, we got rid of doing our crops, so we hired somebody to do our crops. We send our heifers out as well, so we're really nailing down the labor. Uh, we're running the whole farm, uh, 1,100 cows, 1,150 cows with just eight people, uh, not including my brother and I. So there's 10 of us on the farm uh, every day. Uh, I think, you know, with labor the way it is uh, and everything else getting tight with regulations and insurance, everything, you name it. Uh, labor is going to be the biggest one, but we're just going to drive the cost of production down, and eventually these robots are going to be the way to do that for us. Alright, what reports do you look at daily and why? Uh, so the main one, obviously, is breeding report, uh, the health report, and then production reports we'll look at mainly for new cows, uh, just to see what they did, how many times they're going in. Uh, it kind of makes a difference for us because we try and push them in the new cows in more than twice a day. We'll push them in three, four times a day just to kind of get them used to the fact that they can go in whenever they want. Uh, I think that helps us get them going like that's why we're 3.8 uh, turns a day. So I really think that's why. The herd basically adapted better than people have adapted, uh, I think. Um, so you know, the old moniker, I guess, three days, three weeks, three months. I think we've really got that down to three days, three weeks. Um, the three months, I didn't really feel with the A5s. I thought after three weeks, we were right at, you know, the, the grease was on the wheels and we were going. Um, so I would say, basically, start up right through, everything is where it needs to be. And now that the people, and uh, I say people, I guess I'm included, managing how to manage when they're scraping alleys and just uh, little things. But I'll add up to staying out of the barn as much as possible. Kind of coordinating all that stuff and when they do stuff. So, um, basically three people are in that barn. Sometimes four when I got to do it on a weekend. But, uh, so that's pretty much it. Which kind of gets us down to that six hour a day number, which is big. You know, for as far as paying for them robots and making that barn pay for itself. Before robots, uh, we were 2.2 million 400 thousand pounds a, a year per employee, and now with the robots, um, you know, I was able to get rid of labor. We're 3 million 200 thousand. Right now, milk production is averaging 96 pounds on the whole on all eight robots, uh, the four groups. Uh, two of the groups are over a hundred. Uh, one of the heifer groups is at 95, and then the other group's got about 35 jerseys in it. They're in the 80s, high 80s. Um, I, I like to tell my herds, and they bring the average down, so I don't, you know, they're mostly herds. So, <laughs> but uh, so overall, they're like 96 pounds. We were up to 98. Uh, about three weeks after starting up the A5s, but uh, we're back down to that 96 area. Our goal is to hit 100 average on all four groups. Uh, I think it's reality uh, pretty soon. The reason I chose Laylee, uh, number one, 
Yeah, I said this in the beginning uh, when we started was they've been out the longest. I was up in Canada 25 years ago, 20 some years ago, and I seen them running then and I was blown away. I've never seen anything like it. And uh, so it was the first one I seen. Um, and then when I started visiting, uh, basically the software kind of blew me away and what your software did compared to the competitors. And then the robot itself, you know, you guys have been around a long time, this is what you do. And I think as far as length of use, you, you know, you still got a lot of old ones out there that are still running. And um, that's huge. You know, it isn't like seven years and got to replace them. You know, that worked for seven, eight, ten more years before I got to replace them again. So I, I, that's the big thing. You talk to people that have had them for 20 years and they're still on the one that they started with, you know, you don't find that, especially in a robot. Um, you know, you guys do your updates and whatever you're doing to keep them going. It's it just, that, that made a difference for me. Basically, it started off with um, all the one is close. The rest of them aren't even in the running, so. Um, I, we, it just came down to quality, and this is all they do. Um, and we thought that their research and their development, and they spent time with us as an individual going around different countries in the U.S. showing us what you know was good about them. And for me, it was software was above, far and above, most above uh, the other competitors. Probably my favorite feature, especially the A5s, is hot the cleaning. Um, the A5s, they made it all one step. You just push one button and it goes into the cleaning mode uh, where you can clean it with the water, the hose and everything. Um, and it takes a lot less time. Um, the A5s are quieter, much quieter than the A4s. Um, not that the A4s are loud or anything, but, and then the speed. Uh, we like the fact that, you know, you guys have had the, we're on what, you're on the fifth generation of robots, right. uh, and they've gotten better and better and better. This time, you made some changes on the A5s as far as the software, and it, it really helped some of the little hiccups, maybe, if you want to call them that, with the A4s. Yeah. It shows you each quarter and let down and you can do everything and anything you want to do with this cow on an individual basis right here on this screen, which is really nice. Such as reconnect, prolong, interrupt, uh, routing, whatever you want to do. With cow info, you know, you could go to that. It tells you everything you want to know. Where the A4, you couldn't do that. So that, that's a nice feature. You could, you just can't do it that easy. Right. Um, so it was really, the software part that in the A5 is a lot better. As far as if you're out in the barn or the herdsman's out in the barn, which generally is the case, you're not having milkers out here. Right. Unlike, you know, in the, with the Appy in the parlor, the guys don't really know other than push the button and start milking. Right. But here it's a different story. Right. You know, Tim or I are out here, so it's nice to have the information. We're probably, I figured it out the other day, 75 cents more right now for a cow in the robot, yeah. And before the feed cost went up, we were pretty close in feed cost between the two barns, uh, but it's gone up. But you're taking into account, you know, you're not in here right. the hours, six hours a day for 420 cows an hour. So this barn alone, so with the eight robots, there's about two hours a day to two and a half hours a day for fetching, morning and afternoon. Another hour for scraping. And then between Kim and I doing breeding and health, herd health stuff, another hour. So you got six hours a day for the 420 cows. So originally we had just the two groups and we had one heifer group and one cow group. And unfortunately, we really needed two heifer groups, so the heifer groups, and we, we really couldn't do it like we wanted to manage it. Now with the four groups, we have two heifer groups and two cow groups. It's easier for us to feed and manage. Uh, I have my brothers, I probably have all heifer groups, but the heifers do much better on. So the layout is kind of unique to New York, unique to the U.S., I think. 
Um, there wasn't too many that I've seen in my travels. And I traveled out west, Midwest. We went to Europe, Germany, Netherlands. And this is where I've seen this design, was in the Netherlands, uh, in a new project there. Also in Germany. And it added cost to the barn because of the extra feed alley. So some people are like, it's a waste of space. But in my mind, it gives you a four row barn with a six row layout. Because there's a headlock for almost every cow. Especially with robots, you don't really need that because they're not all up eating at the same time because they don't need to anymore. Because they're not all going to the parlor and coming out at the same time. So the two feed alley, outside feed alleys was the main part. And then the L design for the robots. Uh, I've seen a lot of different stacks, like three or four stacks in a row. Um, the middle running all parallel. And this design, to me, seemed like the best cow flow. And I haven't seen one yet. I've seen them with a double stack and then uh, another one running the other way. And the double stack, there's just too much confusion with cow flow. So I think if you want to add cows on, you just do this design and you just keep building this longer, in my mind. You know, I, I like I said, I went to a lot of farms, probably 30, maybe 40, between my brother and I. And uh, my daughter and I went to Europe, and uh, that's kind of where I saw, saw a lot of this stuff. Like the uh, the gates here behind you, behind me. Uh, it's really nice for the fetch area makes fetching for one person a lot easier. Um, you put three or four in there and close the gate, set it for automatic to go, automatically go up when them cows are through. So you don't have to sit here and babysit this one group of four cows. Just little things like that. And then the biggest thing that I heard in every farm was the footpath. And they couldn't design the footpath to put it in the right spot. Uh, so we spent a lot of time looking at those at different farms and I think we've come up with a, kind of the best place to put it. Whether it's the right design for the footpath is up for debate. Uh, but I think that's really a nice place to put it because the cows have to go through the robot. To get done, through, to get through the footpath they, to eat, they got to go through the footpath in order to do that.